Hey folks, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner, and this is another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Now this video tutorial is coming to you by way of a question from our Facebook group. Our Facebook group is Jack's Tech Corner. Uh, be sure to go over there and, and click the little uh, join button, and I will go through the acceptance thing and accept you, and then you'll be a member to ask these kind of questions. So the viewer asked very simply, how do I take a photograph and expand it or blow it up so I can crop it as an 8x10? Well, to be honest with you, you're not going to take a photograph and you don't want to blow it up to crop it. Because you've got to be very, very careful of this. When you're blowing a photograph up, such as the one uh, that I'm going to be working on, it's a wallet size. So we don't know the total resolution of that wallet size. So if we blow it up too big and crop it, we may in fact lose a lot of the pixels that we're trying to retain. So let's go ahead to the computer and we're gonna have a look here. Okay, so this is the photograph of my daughter a very long time ago. She's now 21. That looks there like she was uh, very young, maybe uh, before the age of one, I would guess. And the kind that we're scanning here, this is my scanning utility, is color. We're doing millions of color. The resolution I'm going to scan at is 300 dpi. If you want the greatest details, what I would say to do is scan as high as your scanner can scan. That's going to make the file size a lot bigger, but it's also going to take that scan and make it very easy for you to blow it up because it's going to retain all the pixels that you have in there. Uh, we're going to say use custom size. I'm not going to do any sizing on this. Uh, so we're not going to change our size here. Auto selection I have set to off. If you don't, it's going to select the whole entire area. and We don't want that. This is a wallet picture, and I guess that's what the viewer is asking about, was you probably have a wallet picture, and you want to blow that up. I mean, that's a, you know, it happens a lot that people want to do that. Image correction is none, and everything else is set here. Now, I do know I'm scanning this to my scanned folder under my pictures uh, directory. So make sure when you scan this thing, you're going to scan it to a folder where you know where it is. It's going to be very, very important in just a minute. But I get so many emails that say, look, uh, Jack, I scanned something to my computer or I downloaded something and I don't know where it's at. Uh, you know, So make sure you create a folder. I just call mine scanned. I'm going to do a quick overview that will warm my scanner up and get it ready to go. And anybody that's ever used a scanner realizes that when you have a scanner, it always seems to want to warm up. So we're going to warm this scanner up and make this very easy to do here. And here comes that uh, picture once again of my uh, daughter at a very, very young age. Uh, these are always fun to do because she'll see these videos and say, Dad, why did you use that picture? But that's a very cute picture of her when she was younger. And as I said, it is a wallet. Okay, so the selection is already made here because I did this prior to this. But if not, you would make a selection of what you want to scan. That's why we don't want to auto-select. Then we're going to go down. We're just going to simply click on Scan. And that's going to, again, for some reason, warm our scanner up. And once we get the scanner warmed up, it's going to be ready to go here. It's now scanning the document. And it's calling the document, the default name is scan. You can change that name to anything you want, but it usually works for me just to have it as scan. Okay, so the photo is now scanned. I can look in my uh, folder here, uh, see pictures. And we'll go down to scanned. And sure enough, it is in there. So we know it's good and ready to go. We are now going to drop the scanner utility. We don't need that any longer. We are done with that. We are now in Photoshop Elements. This is Photoshop Elements 15, folks, but this will work in any version of Photoshop Elements you have. What you want to do is go up under File, open a file up, and we're in our Scan folder. This is why it's very important for you to know where you place that file at, because if not, you're going to be really looking around for that and saying, I don't know where it's at. Click open. Now normally the first thing I would do when I scan a very old photograph such as this, this was in my wallet for years, I would, I would be coming in here and I would touch it all up and clean it up. But this is strictly a resizing um, lesson, so we don't really need to do that. Which I would recommend you do when you click on here is press either Command J or Control J 
and duplicate that background layer. So we're working on a layer that if we mess up, we can always just delete it and start over without destructing our background layer or the normal photo that we started with. So what you're going to do to resize this, okay, remember, we're not going to blow it up and crop it to an 8x10. Why don't you just resize it to an 8x10? That way we don't lose any pixels. So go under Image, Resize, Image Size. Now in Image Size here, you're going to look and you're going to see that this is by pixels at the top. Now if you're very good with pixels and you can convert pixels from inches, do it that way. I am not very good at that. So I'm going to do mine by width and height in inches. So the width, how wide do we want it? Okay, And you said 8 by 10. Being this is a portrait, in other words, a portrait is shot up and down, right? Where the camera's turned up and down like this was. This is a portrait. A landscape would be, the width would be 10 because you're blowing out this way. So depending on what kind of photograph you're doing, but being that this is a portrait, I'm going to do the width across here is 8th and the height will be 10. So I'm going to do 10. That is my 8 by 10. The resolution is 300, so we're going to leave that resolution and simply click OK. I'm going to go back up to my view and we're going to fit the screen. And there you see, now we have our 8 by 10 photograph. Now we got to do is save this out. What I would do is go to File, Save As, and let's just go under Pictures and, and Scan for, for back, a lack of better place to put this. And what I'm going to do here is um, I'll make Daughter 8 underscore 10. And I don't want it to be a PSD file because most of your developers out there will not process PSD files. So go down, change it to a JPEG file, and then we're going to save that out. This is where a lot of people get messed up right here, this little box here. The quality. See the quality is 10 right now? When you're sending photographs out to be developed or printed for you, run that all the way up. The file size is only 2.7 megabyte, which is not bad at all. But what happens, I want the maximum amount of pixels going to my uh, processor, uh, you know, which is like smugmug.com, uh, shutterfly.com, uh, I think even Flickr now is printing. So if you want to go to Flickr, any one of those sites, you want the maximum amount of pixels going out there to them so, so you make sure you get a really nice print back. Then simply click OK. Once you click OK, you're good to go. So that photograph then, if we go back to my file manager or my finder, if you're on a Mac, and we go to scanned, now you see we have that 8x10 picture in there. This is my 8x10 right there, and it's now ready to go. So I can upload that to my uh, favorite developer and have that processed. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to increase the size of a photograph to have it printed. As you can see, it's very, very easy. Uh, there's only a couple steps to go by. But, um, you know, just take your time and learn. Uh, Photoshop Elements has so much in it that you can learn. It's just really amazing. And if you really want to learn and learn all the tools and all the great uh, techniques you can do uh, with, the, with the, um, uh, the guided edits and the quick edits, by all means, check out my courses at jtclearning.com. That's jtclearning.com. Hey, you bought this software. You want to know how to use it. So go over to jtclearning.com and sign up for one of those courses today. Uh, you won't be disappointed. We've had thousands of students already, and uh, the reviews have been very, very positive. So once again, go to jtclearning.com. Folks, thank you so much for joining me here at Jack's Tech Corner and learning once again on how to increase your photo size. Until next time, take care. Keep those shutters clicking. Keep those editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.